advocacy has become front and center for our community. The importance of educating the FDA and about our vast needs for treatments has never been more crucial at this time. So today I wanted to share about a recently published paper that will be used for a variety of reasons, but also to help the FDA understand the impact of the syndrome, not only on the person with prader willi syndrome, but also on the entire family. The PWS Clinical Trials Consortium has been working on several projects over the last few years, looking at the usefulness of including caregiver burden or caregiver stress as another measure to be used in clinical trials. I wanna digress here for a moment and clarify about the use of the term caregiver burden. Now our kids are not a burden and they are wonderful and beautiful and they can also be very funny at times, but they do have their challenges and they do require a lot of ongoing care, whether they're six years old, 15 or 27. And in the scientific literature, it's important to also use the terminology recognized by uh, in healthcare as well as in research communities. So the term caregiver burden, which is used in those communities, is defined as stress and fatigue that can result from the sustained effort of caring for a person with a chronic medical challenge or condition. And so that's why we use this term. So why is it important to even study caregiver burden in prader willi syndrome? Well, there's a couple of reasons this is important. One is to demonstrate the high unmet medical needs in the community, which regulatory agencies like the FDA do really want to hear about. And they want to see research published about it in peer-reviewed journals because that's really what they listen to. That's kind of their currency. Caregiver burden has been used as an additional outcome measure in other studies and other conditions. Uh, for patient uh, drug trials, such as in dementia, Alzheimer's, and cancer. So we've been interested in seeing if this would be appropriate to use in prader willi syndrome. And we've been hearing about some current impacts on stress and caregiver burden related to current treatment trials that are going on in prader willi syndrome. We've heard about how for families where these uh, drugs have been effective on reducing hyperphagia, that there's been improved function in these families and reduce stress, not only on the parents, but siblings as well. So these are sort of some real life examples of how a drug that is effective on reducing hyperphagia might also decrease caregiver burden. But it is important to document this in the research literature. And we know that improving family stress is important in and of itself as an indicator of effic efficacy of uh, uh, medication to the FDA, but we need to also publish studies about this. So in the study that we did that was just published, um, we found a couple things. So without anything changing, caregiver burden remains high over a six month period. And we also found that with uh, hyperphagia, those scores pretty much stayed the same and were considered stable over a six month period. And lastly, we found that caregiver burden and hyperphagia were significantly correlated. So what that means is with increasing hyperphagia, we see greater uh, burden on caregivers. This is not surprising, but this is the first study to document this, and these findings provide support for using caregiver burden as an outcome measure in future studies on hyperphagia and also highlight the significant unmet medical needs in prader willi and the impact on families. The results of this study reinforce what we already know in the community, but other agencies such as the FDA and insurance companies don't know this. So it's important to get it out in the scientific literature in peer-reviewed journals. Now, many of you participated in these studies and we truly thank you for taking the time to do this. It is really important to have as many people as we can participate in research. Without you, we can't do these studies. And without these studies, we can't document and define these issues in Prader-Willi syndrome. So again, thank you.